Don't you have real work to be doing? Welcome to Ranger Reviews, the web series we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 135th episode of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, as well as the 23rd episode of Season 3 titled A Different Shade of Pink, Part 1. We begin this episode at the Youth Center, where Kim is practicing her gymnastics while Tommy just watches on like a perv. Then an older guy comes up, introducing himself as Gunther Schmidt. Tommy is surprised to see him, but not as surprised as Kimberly, who dismounts off the beam, and she totally fangirls. Gunther asks if he'll see her at the tryouts for the Pan Global Games, and when he finds out that she doesn't even have a coach, he insists that she's going to clear some of his schedule up to help her get ready. He also explains that if this is going to work, she needs to be 100% dedicated. Rita sees this and she's pissed, saying that they have to stop her, for some reason, and Zed brings up a good point. They couldn't even beat her when she was missing a damn power coin. However, Rita says that she's going to handle this anyways. At the command center, all six are together with Alpha and Zordon. Everyone is talking about how they came as soon as they heard about Kim's message. She starts to tell them about Gunther Schmidt, but then Aisha says that Ernie already told them all about it. I mean, what the hell, Ernie? The others are super excited for Kim, and Tommy mansplains for Kim that she's worried about being stretched too thin time-wise to be a Power Ranger. Zordon says that it was never his intention to take her away from her normal life. I mean, says the guy who abducted a child to be a soldier in his war, but like, okay. Kim thanks him, and she says that she's going to figure it out. And now, it's time for a training montage. Seriously, can't how many times we see the exact same shot over and over again. Kat is watching her workout creepily, and she replaces a phone that's there, which means Kat was trying to remain incognito by just standing in plain sight on the phone. That's kind of amazing, but I kind of wish instead she had sunglasses and a trench coat on. At the juice bar, we hear on the TV that the White House has issued a statement saying that an international spy named Johan Gauss was last seen on the southern coast of the United States. That's a 1,933 mile crapshoot, guys. Hulk and Skull show up scaring Ernie, and they hear that essentially this guy is just like Gunther Schmidt because the TV reporter says that he speaks with a strained accent. That's racist. Kim and Gunther come up and Kim says that she brought Gunther by to try one of Ernie's special protein shakes, but comes off way more sexual than they intended. Kim then introduces her coach to Bulk and Skull, and they just say that they have to go, and they crouch down behind the bar. Now they're spying on them from afar, and Skull takes this opportunity to tell us that he's always wanted to be a gymnast, but he hated being upside down. Feels like a random thing to tell someone, but it's going to come back. Bulk explains that this guy matches the description of the guy from the TV, but first Bulk ends up thinking that he's describing the President of the United States, and he does an actually kind of phenomenal Bill Clinton impression. Anyways, Bulk says that they have to bring the spy in, and they will be revered by Stone. In the park, Rita and Kat are just hanging out in the damn tree, and Rita says that she has plans for Kimberly. Then Kat has a flashback of her diving into a pool of water. That's it for this scene! At the command center, everyone except for Kim is there, and they see on the viewing globe that there's an attack happening on Angel Grove, but it's being divided into three sections. Apparently, Vampirus and Artisimal are together. Adam and Billy will handle the tangos. Rocky and Naisha will handle Vampirus and Artisimal. Tommy will handle Goldar and more tangos. He then says that they should wait for the last possible moment to call Kim. It's Morphin time! Rocky and Naisha show up with their foes, fighting. Meanwhile, Billy and Adam are taking on the Tangas, and Tommy is also fighting Tangas and Goldar and Rito, who I don't remember being mentioned beforehand. Tommy realizes that he needs help, and he calls Billy and Rocky, but Billy says that there's no way that they can help, and Rocky says Tommy has to call Kim. At the youth center, Kim is about to practice when her communicator beeps. She tells Coach Smith that she has to go because it's an emergency, and Schmidt is a dick to her, saying that it's important for her to be on schedule. And he tells her to deal with any second thoughts that she could be having before she basically keeps wasting his time. I mean, what a chode. Then Kim's communicator goes off again, and she tells her terrible actor of a coach that she wouldn't be leaving if she didn't think that this was an actual emergency. She runs off. Meanwhile, Bulk and Skull need to figure out how to get Coach Schmidt, and Skull suggests a citizen's arrest. But Bulk has a plan. Kim shows up, and for once, she bails Tommy out, which is refreshing. Now we see that Bulk and Skull are in robes, and they want to tell Coach Smith that they're gymnasts, and they want to be trained by him for the Pan Global Games. Meanwhile, Tommy is still struggling, and he tells everyone that their strength lies in teamwork. So they should probably get together. Then he gets kicked in the chest by Goldar. Thank you, Goldar. Then Billy and Adam come lightly jogging in with Tangus behind them. 
Then Vampirus and Artissimal come flying in from Rocky and Aisha. I feel like this could have been done earlier, but whatever. Now they're all taking on the monsters and the tangas, and honestly, there's just so much going on. But then all the monsters just bail for no reason. Tommy tells Kim that she has to get back to practice and she teleports away. We then see Bulk and Skull walking out in leotards and Skull screams about how he doesn't like to be upside down. Kim comes walking in, but she gets buzzed by Tommy. Tommy says that they're back now and they're taking the shark cycles in. That's lame. Meanwhile, Kat is there and she remembers standing up high on a diving board above a pool. All six of the rangers are on the shark cycles, taking on all the exact same baddies from before, but once again, we're supposed to believe that this is cool or something, but honestly, it's just kind of boring. Especially because Rito just rides bitch with Kim for a while to mess with her. Then Tommy kicks Rito off, making him retreat. Then Aisha gets Artissimal to retreat, and then Goldar retreats from Rocky. Also, Vampirus bails. Then Kim just faints into Tommy's arms. Outside the youth center at night, Tommy is dropping Kim off so that she can practice solo because Ernie left the beam up for her. That's nice of him, I guess. I mean, he's already watching her cat. Tommy says that she should have someone here to spot her, but Kim says that Coach Smith is going to try to meet up with her there. Tommy even says he'll come back if she needs him, and she kisses him goodbye. It's so nice to see these two actually act like a real couple. Kim runs into Ernie, and he tells her that Coach Smith said he can't come. Ernie is letting Kim stay there alone and work out and then close up when she's done. That's honestly not that weird, because Ernie seems like the type that he would just do that for them. Meanwhile, Ernie leaves and Kat appears, and she remembers talking to some boy by a tree when Rita was watching like a perv. Then, Kim is practicing. Then, Kat's boy toy gets turned into a tanga, and Kim falls. Then, Rita turns Kat evil via spell in the park, and Kim is still doing gymnastics. Then, Kat remembers her doing a dive, and as she's diving, we hear an announcer say that she struck her head on the diving board, and then he says, so much for Australia's hope for the pan-global goal. Like, that's a thing that someone who would have just announced at a public event when someone just got hurt. Kat then comes to realizing what's going on. She starts yelling and pounding on the door. Rita sees this and she says, the cat's out of the bag, because of course. Then Kat gets into the juice bar via a delivery door and Kim does a slow motion backflip, falling off the balance beam. She lands on the mat hard as Kat runs over, saying that it's all her fault. Kim seems to be knocked unconscious. To be continued. Over the credits, we see a blooper of Bulk and Skull where Bulk's actor fell backwards. This episode has such strong peaks and such strong valleys. Getting to finally understand what the hell is going on with Catherine helps resolve a plotline that they've started episodes ago, but honestly, a lot of it feels like a forced way to get Kim to not be around as much. I'm glad that they actually ended on a real cliffhanger, though. Like, Kim just knocked herself out. Though I'm not sold that she'll be instantly, though I'm not sold that she's going to be insanely injured from falling from that height, but eh, it makes for drama. Other than that, how will things continue with this story next episode? Until then, may the power protect you.